Hi everyone, this is a quick video for ANSYS Fluent Workbench Design Modeler tutorial. Today we will look at a lamina flow in a three-dimensional pipe. First, we will draw and mesh a pipe. To start with Fluent, we should double-click this icon. And then we change the name as pipe, and then save it. We input the file name as ANSYS Fluent Lamina, then save it. We are on the right hand side of the screen, we will find the window of geometry property. If you cannot see this property window, please just right click the geometry cell and select the property. In the geometry property, we should make sure that the analysis type is three-dimensional, and uh, then we leave other values as default. And uh, next, we just double-click the geometry cell, and uh, we will open the design modeler. Since we will draw the sketch on the X1 plane, so we just left-click the X1 plane in the tree outline, and uh, right-click in the graphic windows. Then we go to sketching, select circle. And we will find that if we move our mouse near the axis, a character C will appear near the mouse, which means the selected point is on the axis. If we move our mouse near the origin, and we will find the character P will appear instead of C, which means the selected point will be the origin. We select the origin at the circle center and draw a circle. Then we go to dimension. Select general and select circle we just draw. Modify the diameter as 10 meters. If you want to use other unite, please just click the unite tab and uh, then choose your preferred unite in the modeling. Then we click the ball on the right bottom to have an isometric view. Next, we just click the extrude button and select the circle. Click apply and then change the name as pipe and modify the depth as 400 meters. Click generate. Then we will give name to the inlet, outlet, and the wall surface. Please make sure that in the selection filter, the surfaces button is highlighted. We just uh, choose the wall surface and right click it and uh, select the name selection. Apply. Change the name as wall generate. Repeat the steps to identify the inlet and outlet surface. Then we have finished the work in the geometry and uh, we close the design modeler. And we will find that uh, the question mark in the geometry cell has been replaced by a check mark, and then we double click the mesh, and we will open meshing. First, what we will do is creating the default mesh. Select the mesh and right click, select generate mesh. And this is the default mesh. You can just uh, modify the mesh size in the sizing and uh, unfold the sizing, and uh, you can just change the relevance cen center to the from the cost to the medium or the fine. Here we will show three different meshing methods. The tetrahedron method, the hexagon method, and the prism method. 
First, we click the mesh control button and uh, select the method. Choose the body and uh, apply. Click method and uh, change it as the uh, tetrahedron generate. And uh, check it. And now the shape of the cell has become the tetrahedron. Then click the conforming method and uh, change it as the hex dominates. Generate it. And we will find the shape of the cell has become the hexer again. So change the method as multi zones. And then the change the mapped mesh type as the prism. Here we use the uniform surface mesh method. And uh, we just change the sweep element size as 1.0. And uh, generate. Well, I find that it the mesh has become a rectangle, so the problem may be caused by the sizing. So we just uh, choose sizing and uh, make sure that uh, the selection filter is edge. Then select the circle and apply, and uh, change the type as number of divisions, and the uh, number of divisions is 48, generate. Well, we will find that uh, the prism mesh has been created. Then click update. Now closing meshing, and uh, now we have finished the drawing and the meshing of the modeling. Thank you very much.